Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. I'm frequently asked, which is the best book to read to learn to program in Go? And the truth is, I haven't had a good answer. And the reason for that is that back in 2015, when I learned to program in Go, I read the book called Programming in Go by Mark Summerfield. And it was a good book. I learned a lot from it. I enjoyed it. However, that was eight years ago. It's very outdated by now. Go has a new release approximately every six months. So in the last eight years, that's 16 new releases. And some of those releases have been pretty major. We've added modules for dependency management. We've added different error handling. We've added generics recently. And so any book that's more than a year or two old is going to be missing most, many or most of these features. So what I decided to do was to go on Amazon and I ordered some books. I ordered a lot of books. I actually ordered six of them. What was my criteria? Well, first, I wanted a book that was relatively recent for the reasons I just described. So I looked for any book written in the last year to a year and a half, roughly. I wanted it to be designed for beginners. So there shouldn't be advanced topics for seasoned Go developers. These should be books designed for people who have never written Go before, maybe even who've never written code before. So these are the six books I got. Um, if you know of any other books that I should be reviewing, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll try to add it to my queue. But my intention is to read every one of these books so you don't have to, and then tell you which of these books is the best book to read to learn Go in 2023. And as new books come out, I'll add new reviews, and we can try to keep this as up-to-date as possible. But for now, I'm going to be reviewing the best books to learn Go for 2023. Now, the book I'm going to start with is Go Programming for Dummies. And the only reason I'm starting with this book is because it's the first one that came in the mail when I ordered these. So I started reading it first. Let's start with some of the boring details first. Go Programming Language for Dummies, uh, first edition by uh, Wei Meng Li. I hope I said that right. 310 pages, published April 27, 2021 by John Wiley and Sons Incorporated. So April 27 means that Go version 1.16 was new at the time that this uh, book was published. As of this recording, Go 119 is re is current, and 120 is just about a month away to come out in February. So we're already three versions behind, and it probably doesn't dis discuss generics for that very reason. But let's jump in. So who's this book for? Well, the book naturally is for beginners. Um, dummies, I guess. Uh, the book says it's for those who are familiar with the basics of programming. If you are familiar with Excel, you probably have enough of a basic uh, understanding of computer programming to get something out of this book. It, it really is a, a beginner level book. It, it's really not for those who've never done any programming. But again, if you've done Excel or something like that, you, you're probably familiar enough to get something out of this book. Um, it's, it's fairly basic. Now, I've never actually read any of the For Dummies series before. I've seen them on bookshelves uh, on all sorts of topics from computers to, to gardening to who knows what. And honestly, I, I'm kind of put off by the, that brand. Um, I guess people like it or they wouldn't keep selling them, um, but it's not my ideal. Uh, keep that in mind for this review. Uh, maybe you do like the For Dummies brand uh, and, and it's a good match for your personality and your learning style. If that's the case, then uh, some of what, I'm, what I might be saying here, uh, you could take with a grain of salt. But it's, it's not my thing, so to speak. Having said that, this book is written in a fairly casual uh, narrative style. Uh, it, it kind of reads like you're talking to your friend or to a colleague who's just explaining things to you. Maybe I can demonstrate with just a, a, an excerpt, a small quote here. Um, in the description talking about if and else, uh, the author says, Like humans, a program makes decisions all the time. And it's precisely this ability that makes computers so powerful. In Go, one way you make decisions is with the if-else statement. So you can see it, it you know, introduces the topic with a sort of human touch, it explains that computers are like humans in some ways, and just you know, sort of gently introduces the topic. It's not, it's not dry, it's not choppy. Um, so if you like that narrative style, um, that, that could be really good. And I can, I can really see how this would be useful for somebody trying to learn a, a language, especially if you are new to programming. Um, however, this, this style does have downsides in my view. Uh, the, the biggest one probably is that this narrative style doesn't lend itself very well to being a reference book. Uh, so if you want to go back later and look things up, it can be a little bit tricky. And, and part of that's just because the, you know, as it, as it's talking through a coding example, it's building up, uh, on, on topics, but those topics aren't necessarily grouped in a way 
that is easy to look up uh, as reference material. You're not going to find all of your data types to find on, on page 15 and all of the different uh, control structures on page 32 and so on. They're kind of dispersed and introduced in a more natural human, human way. Um, so that, that's good and bad. I actually remember when I was learning Perl, which long predates uh, my time learning Go, uh, I read the, the famous book, Learning Perl. Um, the many, many, many people started with this book when they were learning programming. Um, and, it, and it was written in a similar way. And although I, I loved the book at the time and I learned a lot from it, uh, I do remember frustrating days when I was trying to look something up in that book that I, I just couldn't find. Because uh, I remembered that maybe it was in this chapter, but actually it was in that chapter or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it was difficult to use as a reference. Um, so my, I guess my main point here is if you read this book to learn Go, uh, you'll probably want another book or maybe Google uh, for your reference material. This isn't necessarily the best book to look up uh, concepts after the fact. One, one really trivial example of, of this in the book, um, on page 30, uh, it offers a little technical tip and it describes what a rune type is in Go. Uh, however, the rune type isn't mentioned in the index anywhere. So unless you remember that it's on page 30 or the context in which it mentions this uh, this rune type, if, if you're later, a month later, thinking, oh yeah, I remember that book talks about runes, you're, you're never going to find it. You're going to have to basically read the book again to find that, that mention of runes. Let's move on to the content of the book because um, that's really the most important part, right? Now, the content covered in this book is, I would say, adequate. Uh, it's not very in-depth. Uh, it, it misses a lot of details. Uh, maybe that's okay in a beginner's book. Um, but just as an example, it doesn't even give a catalog of all the data types in Go. Uh, I, and I mean the, the primitive ones. Of course, you can create your own. It wouldn't have those. But it doesn't list all of the uh, primitive data types in Go. And in fact, the only mention of Rune, as I just mentioned, is in this little footnote that isn't even in the index. So if you're reading some Go code and you come across a Rune and you think, gee, what does that mean? Uh, you're not going to find the answer in this book easily. You're not going to be able to just flip to the index and look up runes and understand that code. So you will want some other uh, supplemental material. Now, the book does go into the, the vital areas of Go. It talks about data types, functions, control structures, interfaces. talks about Go routines. It does talk about packages and modules, which is good. And it dives a little bit deeper into a few areas. Uh, specifically, it talks about JSON marshalling and unmarshalling and how to consume and serve web or, or HTTP or REST requests. Um, and there's even a chapter on working with MySQL. So I think this book is written um, with uh, a web developer type person in mind um, since it, it focuses on building uh, JSON, HTTP and database related services. Um, however, there are some areas of this book that are, that are really missing, uh, in my opinion, that are sorely missing. Um, perhaps the most important of those is it doesn't talk about testing at all. The testing package is not mentioned, um, and there's no chapter about how to write tests. Uh, any professional developer should be writing tests for their code as well. Um, if you're just a hobbyist, you should also, but maybe, you, maybe that's the excuse. Um, but, uh, that, that's missing. Uh, the other piece that's missing, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning, is generics. And that's just because this book came out before generics uh, were in Go. Um, so that's that's excusable but unfortunate because if you want to learn about Go in 2023, you probably want to learn about generics. So that's missing from this. And then a third area that this book, uh, I think, could have done better on, on touching on is the tools that come in the standard Go tool chain. Uh, it could talk about GoFumpt, uh, Go Imports, uh, Go Vet, uh, the static linter. Uh, there's a bunch of different tools that come just by default with Go. And this book doesn't really talk about those uh, except very minimally. On accuracy, uh, I did find a number of minor errors or inaccuracies in this book. Nothing really outrageous. Nothing that's going to make you introduce bugs into your code or anything like that. Um, one of them, going back to this example of the rune, uh, that, that note that isn't in the index. Uh, let, let me read it to you. It says, a rune is any of the characters of certain ancient alphabets. Now, that's just a bad description of a rune. Uh, it it kind of looks like they looked this up on Google and, and didn't even look at the definition in Go because that's not what a rune is in Go. A rune is, uh, is essentially a Unicode code point or a character. Uh, every character in Go is a rune. Uh, so claiming that it's just for certain ancient alphabets, that's silly and inaccurate, uh, but it's not really important. Um, it's not going to misunderstanding that at this level isn't really going to cause you any trouble. It might cause some confusion later on when you learn the real meaning of rune. Perhaps more important than that, than, than this uh, 
obscure data type trivia. Um, there are some confusing and ambiguous uh, claims made in the book. Here's an example from page 25. It says, quote, variables that are defined outside of functions are accessible to all functions. Well, that's just not true. Uh, variables defined outside of functions uh, are package variables. If they are if they start with a capital letter, then they're exported, and then they're accessible to all other packages. Um, and if they start with a lowercase letter, then they're unexported or, or private, and then they're not accessible outside of that package. Uh, but just claiming that they're available to all functions is is just sloppy, and at, at best it's sloppy. At worst, it's just inaccurate. So you know that that's that's confusing. And I could see that tripping up somebody who if somebody read that literally, uh, they could very well be confused about scoping. Uh, of variables in their Go code. So um, there are some errors that, that might be substantial, uh, but by and large, it's not a terrible, terribly inaccurate book. One little nitpick, uh, the, the formatting in the Go code in the book isn't very accurate. It, it It's sloppy. Um, here's an example. So you can see like uh, white space is, is done differently in some places than others. Um, not a big deal. It does make the code a little bit harder to read. Uh, and for somebody like me who's been reading code for many years, it uh, is a bit jarring to see that. Um, if you're new to the language, it probably won't really bother you, but it, it is a little bit annoying to have that inconsistency. Let's talk about the physical characteristics of the book. Um, so the, the the cover has this cute gopher on it. Isn't that nice? Full color uh, gopher nibbling on something. Otherwise, though, the book is completely black and white inside. There's no color inside. Uh, that's fine. I don't expect color in a book on programming. So mostly just black and white, although there are some icons uh, to indicate uh, little notes or tips or, or whatever. Um, there's a few tables, and occasionally you'll see some diagrams representing memory locations or, or you know, how arrays are mapped and things like that. Here's a simple example. Um, the, the paper quality it's printed on uh, is maybe the most notable thing about the physical characteristics. And it, it's kind of like a newsprinty type of, of page. Um, it's not the the stark white I'm accustomed to in most computer books. Um, my first thought was maybe they were uh, trying to print on recycled paper, uh, but I didn't find any claim to that effect, so it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, maybe that's just part of their brand, or maybe it's an attempt to save money. I don't know. Um, it's not a problem, um, but it does make the book feel cheaper, maybe, than if it were on um, you know, the, the bright white paper I'm maybe more accustomed to. But it's not a complaint. It's just an, an observation. So... Let's talk about my conclusions on this book. So this will probably not be my recommendation, but we'll see. I have five more books to go through. Uh, the, the two biggest drawbacks, in my view, on this book, the first one is the information covered. It's just not quite in-depth or, or it's not quite complete enough. That's the better way to say it. It's not quite complete enough to, to earn my full recommendation. It doesn't talk about all the data types. It doesn't talk about all the aspects of the Go language. Um, and it's missing the testing package and, and generics means it's a bit outdated. Uh, so yeah, there's there's some things that I think are missing that really belong in an introductory book on Go. Um, the second thing that makes it uh, maybe remove a quarter of a star uh, from my recommendation would be that it's not good reference material. Um, the the fact that some of the things are missing from the index and the and just the the sort of tutorial narrative uh, approach to the book makes it less useful as a reference. Um, but again, if that's what you want, then then don't take that negative quarter star uh, to heart. Uh, the biggest problem in m my view on this book is that it's just missing too much information to really earn a full recommendation. I haven't seen read the other books yet, so I don't know how it's going to compare. But reading this book in isolation, I would probably give it to maybe three stars on Amazon.com. So I hope you will hit the subscribe button so that you uh, will be notified when I uh, review the other five books on my list. And then finally, the summary, which will give you the final recommendation, which of these six books you should read to learn Go in 2023. If you have learned Go, maybe you already read this book um, and you've missed out on the testing package because it's not there. Uh, I am working on a course, an introductory to testing in Go course. Uh, I would love to have you subscribe to the course uh, and, and give it a try. Uh, you can head over to boldlygo.tech slash courses and there's a link to the upcoming course and potentially other courses as I pr produce them. Um, that course should be coming out later this quarter in 2023, first, first quarter of 2023. So head over to boldlygo.tech slash courses and check out the intro to testing Go course that I'm working on and be sure to hit subscribe and like so that you get the rest of these videos as they come out.
talk to you soon.